Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for coming out this evening. And we, we're off to a little bit of a late start. We were hoping we'd have more people here by now. But um, we will get the ball rolling. And before all else, uh, I will ask Mrs. Garraway to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, we are thankful for the opportunity to gather together this evening, to gather together as a group who are desirous of seeing the growth of an important sector in our economy. Heavenly Father, be with us, guide us in our deliberations, and help us to make right decisions, all of them pleasing to you. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, uh, Angela, and again, good evening to all. Uh, Honorable Premier, uh, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Premier, and uh, Deputy Premier. Uh, good evening all, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we have a, a two-fold mission today, uh, one of which is to just give a very brief update on the Tourism Division's activities uh, over the last uh, four to five months, four months. Um, as well as to introduce uh, a, new, a new concept and the, the persons who have all been invited to and selected to sit on the new advisory council uh, that you will hear a lot more about from the Honorable Premier. Uh, first, I will just like to ask uh, Permanent Secretary Castle uh, to come and deliver a few remarks. Thank you, Director. Honorable Joseph Farrell, Premier. Honorable Dr. Samuel Joseph, Deputy Premier and Minister of Communications, Education and Labor. Prospective members of the Montserrat Tourism Stakeholders Advisory Council, Tourism Staff, Media, good evening. As the director has alluded to, we are extremely pleased to have reached this important accomplishment, whereby a formalized structure for stakeholder engagement and feedback is being institutionalized. Amidst the challenges that are now being faced by the tourism sector, primarily as a result of the COVID-19 global pandemic, we have embarked on targeted planning and preparation. We are doing so to allow Destination Montserrat to rebound. We cannot afford to lose sight of the vision for the tourism industry, sustainable development through quality tourism. At this time, our efforts are focused on standards, industry training, product development and enhancement, and of course, strategy rationalization and implementation. In the presentation later on, you will be updated on the industry training and product development activities that we've completed and those that we are planning for the immediate future up to the remainder of this financial year. The strategic direction for tourism is hinged on an extensive body of strategy development work over the few years, mainly um, speaking of the Tourism Master Plan 2015 to 2025, the Tourism Policy of 2016, and now more recently, the Tourism Strategy 2019 to 2022. As mentioned earlier, there has been an impetus to cushion the impact of the downturn and to revive the tourism sector. From a fiscal standpoint, visitor expenditure for January to September 2019 was 21 million, so you can see the impact of the contribution. And for the same period um, in 2020, a 37% decline to 13.1 million. Also, comparing spend in the non-peak months from April to September 2019, 8.4 million. And this year, only 0.43 million, or a whopping 95% reduction. 
So since April 2020, the harsh reality is tourist, excursionists, cruise passenger, and yachty arrivals have significantly declined, resulting in the loss of jobs, disruption to livelihoods, and of course, hardship for workers across the entire tourism sector, be it in the areas of accommodation, restaurant, tour and taxi, arts and craft, recreation, entertainment, and so on. So now more than ever, a multi-stakeholder approach is needed to assess and to steer recommendations for the development of policies, strategies, and projects. Recommendations that will leverage the unique asset of the destination and to contribute again in a significant way to the socioeconomic development of Montserrat. In closing, I extend appreciation to the prospective members for accepting our nomination to serve on the Montserrat Tourism Stakeholder Advisory Council. Our aim is to improve the competitiveness of the tourism industry, working collaboratively with the stakeholders, embracing one, a scientific approach. And here I'm speaking of examining the current market trends, analyzing tourism statistics and visitor feedback. Two, Tactical thinking, confirming the Montserrat brand, what has been tried and tested, and how these remain relevant within the new realities, and three, inclusiveness. All of us together, because we are aiming to re-emerge on a solid footing. Thank you for your commitment. Okay, so as I said, I'll give a brief update on what the Tourism Division has been doing for the last few months. <clears throat> start off in the area of product development. Um, it was the intention of the Tourism Division to commence industry training for stakeholders from the end of March of this year. But we all know what happened. When we came up for air, we contacted all of the training organizations who had provided, who had previously submitted proposals to determine if they could deliver their programs virtually. Once this was put in place, we began a series of uh, programs in July uh, at the Cultural Center and right here um, at the Credit Union Building. All of the programs included segments that spoke to protocols for COVID-19 in addition to the, the key areas. Um, and uh, those would have been the successful taxi driver um, facilitated by the Caribbean Tourism Organization Managing the customer experience, facilitated by Nibs and Associates out of Antigua. Cruise destination preparedness, facilitated by the Aquila Center for Cruise Excellence out of New Brunswick, Canada. And housekeeping for the tourism sector, facilitated by Transitions Consulting, which is based in Antigua, but the two instructors were from Antigua and Barbados. And, uh, I, I think we, we were able to manage quite well, uh, particularly the, the housekeeping program, which we had here, as well as at a remote location uh, at the Grand View Hotel um, for the last two days so that we could have done the, some of the practical training. Um, that was the fullest class, uh, if, you, if you want to call it a class. Uh, we had about uh, 35 participants and uh, they were by far the liveliest bunch. Um, you know, everybody had questions, everybody was willing to talk and give their little anecdotes and so on. Uh, upcoming programs would include social media for tourism communications, presenting and packaging of souvenir items, and tour guiding. The Tourism Division has also been sharpening its skills. Um, the team at the division having completed courses in digital marketing, destination policy and planning, project management, and product development. And at a slightly higher level, the boss of the tourism division has also been sharpening her skills in the area of brand management. So the Volcano Interpretive Center remains our signature project, and it's about to pick up some speed. Uh, the proposed venue for, for it is uh, at the site of the National Museum. We've completed surveys uh, as well as conceptual drawings. 
Next week, we do a presentation to the Board of the National Trust, uh, following which the scope of works will be finalized and we go out to tender. And we expect, the, well, works will start um, in the early part of 2021. Beach facilities upgrade, uh, we completed uh, an upgrade at Woodlands Beach. I, I imagine that all of you would have visited Woodlands Beach between, when was it, June, I think, that we completed that project, uh, and now. Uh, <clears throat> we've done a lot of um, paving, making it easier to access the, the main building, um, as well as the beach area. The rest of this project includes the installation of shower and bathroom facilities at uh, Isles Bay, Lime Kiln, uh, Old Road Bay, and Little Bay. We have received bids. Um, preliminary evaluations will be completed by tomorrow, uh, and we expect the works to commence um, shortly thereafter. Hiking trails upgrade, <clears throat> phase two of the uh, trails upgrade is on. We've conducted an audit of the five trails that are to be completed, namely the Dubri Cassava, Underwood, Dry Waterfall uh, trails, the Katy Hill Trail System, and Hope Ridge Trail. The scope of works is being finalized, and the request for quotes uh, will go out this week, and works to commence by the end of November. One of the things that we hope to accomplish with the help of our stakeholders is the development of a, a tagline for all of our communications. So we have developed a new website that was launched uh, last month, and uh, we have been able to, to give a, a small platform to all of the service providers uh, on the island um, in the areas of hospitality, food and beverage, transportation, etc. <clears throat> Some people are equipped to uh, you know, take advantage of that. Um, I would say many are not, uh, but those that are not, uh, you know, your, your, your listing is there. Anybody from any part of the world can see who you are and, and you know, the basic services that you offer. And so we'll be encouraging a lot of the, the stakeholders um, you know, to really um, up their skills in terms of, of, you know, using the website as a, as a marketing tool. Um, new features will be introduced regularly, and that's, you know, essentially to keep the, the website fresh. Uh, so things like blogging and, and changing up photography, adding videos and so different content, um, that will happen on a regular basis. So back to the tagline. Previous iterations um, have been, and I'm sure all of you would remember, Montserrat, a Caribbean treasure, spectacular by nature, off the grid, and come, we have time for you. Some were popular, some were not popular, some were not liked at all. There is need, however, for a strong tagline that clearly defines the brand essence of the destination in a few catchy, easy to remember words that can easily complement our logo, a logo which um, continues to test positively on the international market. Although print advertising is, is being minimized, uh, it seems by the minute, um, the division also, also supported um, the, were well not supported, we, we took part in advertising campaigns with Caribbean Beat Magazine. This is the in-flight magazine for Caribbean Airlines. Um, you know, we were looking at, at the goings-on with, with Liat and, and some of the other carriers that, you know, would, could feed into, uh, into Antigua and then on to Montserrat. Um, you know, we all know that there's uncertainty with, with Liat. So we, we joined hands with Caribbean Beat Magazine, uh, which has a varied readership, uh, not just in the Caribbean, but uh, in international gateways as well for Caribbean Airlines. And we participated in their digital magazine. They went digital for the first time in September. And so we participated in the September, October, and November, December issues uh, using a theme of green adventure. 
Um, <clears throat> as I said, we, we also submitted, su supported the publication of the History of Montserrat Cricket, published by a Monstration who lives in, a, in Florida, uh, with, with some advertising, print advertising. And we also participated in interviews with regional and international media, um, including one with PIX11 in New York uh, back in August. And of course, right now, a lot of the questions are, what are you doing about COVID? When are you reopening your borders? And tell us a little bit about Montserrat. Attracting the media to the destination to help tell our story uh, will feature very prominently in our marketing strategy. In fact, the last group of journalists that we hosted, they were here for St. Patrick's Festival and were actually at ZJB when Premier announced that all festival activities had to come to an end. Um, but they are all very keen to return uh, to complete their assignments. And of course, Premier, they totally understood why we took that decision. Let me just add that. <laughs> <clears throat> We've enjoyed partnerships and dialogue with both public and private sector organizations at a heightened level since the pandemic took charge of our lives and really our economies as well. Um, so we would have worked with the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Uh, we are a member. Uh, and with them, we would have engaged in international communications, webinars, trade shows, training. Uh, and Montserrat is now, as of last week, the vice chair representing British Overseas Territories. The Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, uh, where we would have done webinars and training, uh, as well as some consultation. We actually consulted with CHTA uh, before, um, you know, putting together the, the whole framework, or while we were putting together the framework of the Advisory Council. Uh, some of you in the room, if not all, may have received um, invitations to participate in some of their webinars. Uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, CAFA, of course, um, we would have collaborated on uh, the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, last week, they would have launched the Caribbean Travelers Health Assurance Stamp for healthier, safer tourism, uh, as well as a, a, a mobile app, uh, the Caribbean Travelers Health mobile app. And of course, the OECS uh, at the ministerial level. Virtual trade shows. Um, we participate, this is one of the events in which we participated with the Caribbean Tourism Organization. They hosted the Caribbean Virtual Roadshow uh, back in September. Uh, this event targeted travel agents and advisors uh, in the UK and Ireland, uh, of which approximately 130 were in attendance. This has allowed us to start developing a much needed database of travel professionals to whom we can do promotions and training webinars in the future. And um, more recently, very, very recently, uh, World Travel Market. So World Travel Market is the second biggest travel and tourism trade show in the world. And while Montserrat has participated in this event in the past, uh, it's a very expensive proposition. And it's easy to get lost amongst the thousands of exhibitors there, um, even though uh, you know, in the past, Montserrat would have, would have been a part of the, the Caribbean Pavilion. Um, sorry about that. While we did not have plans um, to, to participate in the live version um, or the traditional version of, of the event for the foreseeable future, and mainly because of cost, um, we felt that participating in virtual world travel market was a cost-effective way to directly target the travel trade uh, and media, still operating under the banner of the Caribbean. Um, so we partnered with the Caribbean Tourism Organization, UK Europe chapter. That event began today. Uh, leading up to today was extremely tiring and taxing. It's a first for everybody. Uh, so it's the first time they've done it in this format. Um, and certainly the, the first time that we are particip participating in, in something of this scale. Um, so today there were a series of um, conference, conference sessions and we would have had uh, a few meetings well today um, that, that went well. 
the system does have some bugs in it and hopefully uh, they will have those worked out by tomorrow because the, the program ends on Wednesday. Uh, so the trend of participating in virtual trade shows and promotions uh, is going to feature more prominently in the division's marketing strategy going forward. Uh, <clears throat> as you would imagine, because of the, you know, complete slowdown in, in activity, in travel activity, that has also been <laughs> complemented, if, if I could use that word, by a slowdown in marketing activities. Um, but marketing budgets um, across the board have been slashed. Um, most destinations, certainly in the Caribbean, slashing budgets by you know well over um, 60 percent um, but the, the the trend of the virtual virtual promotions uh, is definitely growing and uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of different organizations that would have had these massive trade shows uh, both in Europe and, and North America uh, have begun to put their programs in the the, the virtual environment so it, it also makes it very cost effective uh, for us to be able to attend these. And because of how they are set up, we can actually go in, see who is attending, see which media are going to be present, and request meetings directly with them. Whereas if we were there in person, uh, that, would not, that would have been a very difficult um, proposition. Uh, because sometimes, yes, you have the opportunity to uh, set up meetings in advance, but uh, that was not always um, an easy proposition. So you would be there at your booth, um, and uh, you know you you may or may not see the people that you that you would want to see. So that is, as I say, going to feature very prominently going forward, and we are looking forward to to participating in those types of events. Uh, and that's that's it very um, short and sweet. Uh, <laughs> um, we, we can take some, some questions, if, if there are any, uh, before moving on to the next item. Yes, I had the privilege of attending one of those trade shows many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, th at that um, event, there were many travelers, visitors who would want to see the show. How is that being done? How do people get access to seeing the trade show? Is that right. not part of it this time around? So the, the, the consumer side of, of some of the shows, um, they would offer paid attendance. Um, so, you know, they, they, there'll be a nominal fee for, for consumers to attend some of these. World Travel Market is not going that route. Uh, although the, the live version, they started to toy with having a consumer day. Um, but they're not going with that, uh, certainly for the, this inaugural um, virtual world travel market. But there are others um, that have a consumer component to it, and, and it, it's a paid, a paid um, version. Uh, initially, you, there were plans to add some other components to the website in terms of booking. Is that still something that's under consideration? And any plans to take the tourism division back into a separate entity versus remaining under um, GOM? GOM, right. Uh, regarding the website, um, when we, were, when we were researching and, and getting in contact with a lot of the service providers, uh, we realized that there's a huge gap um, in terms of, of how they treat with information and communication uh, so that the, the natural fear was that, and we actually experienced this last year at, at Sailing Week in Antigua when, where we had a booth where you know, somebody's trying to get information and make a booking, and they're not getting any response. And so putting, um, putting a booking engine uh, on the site uh, to, to sort of stimulate that type of activity, um, it is not a dead idea, but we didn't want to bring it out as yet in this first iteration. But it, it is a, um, a component that can be added, and, um, you know, I'm... I'm 
I have no doubt that, that we will add that component, you know, within the, probably within the coming year. Uh, the other one was the tourism division. Um, the, I think there are a lot of things happening behind the scene <laughs> um, that, that would, would inform the, the way forward for the, the tourism division. Um, but the, the prospect of, of having regular and, and you know, more formal collaboration with the stakeholders was definitely recognized. Uh, and that's what has brought us here this evening. Yes, uh, good evening. evening. You mentioned um, with regard to the, the VIC, mm -hmm. that it's um, at the stage of an assessment of the scope of work, so I can't remember exactly what you said. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, I'm a little apprehensive about that in the sense that um, for us, some of us um, tourism stakeholders to be involved in that initial process because lots of times when we reach to a design phase, etc., then it's too hard or too difficult right. to change, rather if it's done in the conceptual stage. Because I want to always underline or remind people in the sense of the interpretation center. As I've watched some of the other regional interpretation centers, like the one at Antigua, etc., um, that there's a move with interpretation centers now to utilize technology yes. rather than the stand um, statue type images, right. etc. And um, I know the technology part is a very, very expensive component, which um, knowing what some of the figures were for the interpretation center, we might, <laughs> it, the, using real technology, it might be even more expensive than the, the, um, doing the project itself. Right. So some rationalization there, I'm really mm -hmm. concerned about that, and to see how that right. um, aspect was there. So a couple of things. Um, very shortly, we will be um, uh, pulling together a, a team, um, you know, that will sort of act as an oversight committee uh, for the development of the VIC. Um, <clears throat> we are constrained by dollars uh, so that we, we had the good fortune of being able to continue uh, the dialogue and working with uh, the company that had been contracted to do this project many years ago. Uh, yes, the, the issue of technology is, is very important, and, and that would have been the big difference between what was being discussed then and uh, where we are today. So it, it is being factored in. Um, the, the location, as I say, we have a proposed uh, site. Um, you know, individually people have said, yes, we, we, we're good with this. Uh, but we, we have to have the official, the, the, you know, make, make a, a, a presentation to the National Trust, which has oversight over the, the museum, uh, and, and get their official stamp of approval. Um, once we have that, you know, we, we will have the, the committee in place, um, you know, going along every step of the way from, from there on. You spoke about the tagline. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the process then for developing the, the new tagline? You, you are fly on Sharice as well. <laughs> we, had, we had that conversation today and um, a, little, a little work in progress. Uh, so you, we, will, we, will, um, we will have a little more on that going forward. But uh, that is one of the things that we would want, you know, the... the support and, and input from the stakeholder advisory committee. So right away there's, know that there's work to be done. <laughs> All good under the water, Miss Aston. <laughs> All right. um, I, I will say that we had someone um, email today about coming in on a Windstar in February and wondering about making a booking. I don't know if there's, mm -hmm a way that we should be answering these emails, if, if that is something that's in the works or something that you can speak to at least? Um, re regarding, regarding reopening of the borders, there are much higher powers than Warren in the, in the room tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know specifically with, uh, with regard to the cruise sector, um, you know, we, we're seeing 
a constant pushback of, of their opening, you know, resumption sailing dates. Uh, so we've heard, we've heard January and February. Um, so you have a direct uh, request for February. Um, you know, I, I, and we've gotten, there have been some stakeholders who have gotten similar types of requests, not for diving, of course, but um, for accommodation and so on. And, um, you know, we, we've advised, you know, short term, just continue to maintain the dialogue. Um, and as soon as we have, you know, a fixed date or period, uh, you know, we will get back to them. But as, as of right now, uh, I cannot say, you know, when that period uh, would be. Um, we had done some work the other day on um, the cruise, the resumption of cruise mm -hmm. tourism and using Italy as an example, right. because Italy had started <coughs> at least six to eight weeks ago. But now there is a spike of COVID in Italy. Mm -hmm. So can you address that with regard to this whole thing about resumption of cruise right. tourism? Thank you. Well, the, the, the spikes that are taking place um, in the north, uh, in, the, in the great white north, um, those have impacted the, the launch dates uh, for resumption of, of sailings. Um, so, you know, we, we knew, what, a month ago, month and a half ago, that uh, cruises had resumed in Europe, um, and we had gotten insights into what was happening in Italy, as you, as you mentioned, um, where, you know, only groups were allowed, to, only, so not groups, but only people who had um, specific tours booked were allowed um, ashore. You couldn't, as an individual, just decide to come off the boat and go wandering in whatever city you were in. Uh, so it was, you know, very restricted. Um, of course, the the protocols, um, the protocols were were fully in place with the face masks and the social distancing, and only certain sites and attractions were available to to the tour operators. Um, but with the spikes, as I said, that that has influenced. Um, the, the continued pushback of opening dates. So the, Rosalind, what's the one that's home porting in Barbados again? The cruise line that's home porting in Barbados. Uh, you remember? Hmm? No, not Silver Sea. Anyway, one of the lines that we get um, is, is home porting in Barbados and they are set to start soon, um, not to Montserrat, but you know, to certain other islands. I don't know if that is going to be pushed back at all um, in, the, in the coming days or weeks, uh, but they were to have started, I think, at the beginning of, of November. So it would be interesting to see you know, if, any, if any change has been made there. But once a destination's borders are closed, then, you know, the, the, the cruise business could be back up and running, but if your borders are closed, um, then you are obviously out of that, um, you know, out of that rotation, so to speak. Okay, so I would invite again uh, Honorable Premier to come and deliver the feature address. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all of you. It is truly a pleasure to welcome all of you here this evening on what is undoubtedly a major milestone in the development of our local tourism sector. The last seven months have been difficult for all of us who call ourselves monstrations and call Monstrat our home. COVID-19 has dealt the entire world the heavy blow, and Monstrat certainly has not been left out. So, to say that the pandemic is the biggest threat that we've ever seen in our economic and even lifestyle, it is a mild understatement. The government has taken tough measures, made tough calls to ensure 
and we keep the economy afloat up to this point. We have been able to weather the storm so far. A number of protocols have been developed and proposed by the, reg by the region's main public health authorities, organizations including CARICOM, OECS, CARIPA, um, CARFA, in conjunction with tourism sectors in the region. In fact, just last Thursday, CARFA would have launched the Caribbean Travel Health Assurance Stamp to health and safety tourism and a new health app. These are developed to secure the confidence of the region's citizens or travel partners and prospective visitors. Around the world, for the travel and tourism sector to thrive and for it to develop in a sustainable manner, governments need to provide the supportive physical, regulatory, and physical and social environment, an environment that is also conducive to business development. Indeed, government's role in travel and tourism is generally to set national tourism policy, determine and allocate the tourism budget, establish an appropriate legislative framework oversee the administrative structure of policy delivery, assess and influence wider government policies impacting on tourism, and put in place appropriate research, statistics, and evaluation programs. And for many governments, that role also extends to destination, marketing, and project development. But it doesn't stop there. Successful tourism Destinations also have a strong and vibrant private sector working in collaboration with the government and the National Tourism Organization. And this brings us to a main reason for us to be here tonight. The Office of the Premier and the Tourism Division have recognized that there is a need to strengthen the relationship between government and tourism stakeholders. The formation of a Tourism Stakeholder Advisory Committee Council to inform tourism policy and strategies from Montserrat can set the tone in realizing the vision for the local tourism industry, which is sustainable development through quality tourism, whereby it ensures that tourism development on the island keeps pace with national and socioeconomic development. The main objective would be to improve the competitiveness of the tourism industry using a multi-stakeholder approach. The TSSC would help define Monstrat's branding position, and by focusing on the development of the island's tourism product and ensuring adherence to industry standards and best practices, it would play a major role in the delivery of brand promised. What are the objectives of the Council? The main objectives of the, of the Advisory Council will be to serve as a, th as a think tank and in an advisory capacity on matters of global tourism, marketing, and product trends. It will advise the government as to how Monstrat can take advantage of these trends, as well as to mitigate against the potential loss of market share and decrease in visitor expenditure. The council would be the primary conduct, sorry, the primary conduit for representation of the tourism sector to the government of Montserrat by providing advice to government, the tourism division on tourism related issues that also have an impact on the wider community. As it did in the formation of the Montserrat Tourism Master Plan of 2015, and more recently the tourism strategy of 2019, Government would also seek out recommendations from the Advisory Council on the development of policy and strategy relating to tourism in Montserrat. We are confident that this enhanced collaboration would identify gaps in the tourism product offering 
as well as barriers to providing positive visitor in experiences, marketing recommendations on how these gaps and barriers can be addressed. Other objectives of the, P of the TSA, TSAC include helping to grow the visitor's economy on a more sustainable basis, informing the establishment of tourism industry standards, providing input to key marketing and branding activities to support increased visitor demand to Montserrat, assisting in building stronger local community awareness of the importance and value of tourism to the economy, recommending tourism industry training and capacity building initiatives to help build positive relationship between government and all tourism stakeholders in Ireland. It is to act as a sounding board for new tourism ideas and initiatives. They also provide, will provide feedback for tourism campaigns and initiatives and to identify new tourism related partnership opportunities. And finally, it will ensure that there is an alignment between the tourism related objectives and activities of the various local partners and national tourism in initiatives. The composition shall consist of a maximum of 15 members, including professionals, including professionals from the following sectors. Accommodation to include hotel, villas, and B&Bs, tour and taxi association, Montreal Industry and Commerce, Industry of Chamber and Commerce, Montreal National Trust, Sites and Attractions, Cruise Line Agent Tour Operators, Water Sports, Air Transportation, Restaurants, Academia, Media, Entertainment, Culture, Arts and Craft. I know the numbers sound big. Members are invited to serve in a voluntary capacity on the Council based upon their expertise and insight about the sector that they represent. Their term shall run from November 9th, today, 2020, through to December 31st, 2021. And we are grateful for the commitment shown by the council members for agreeing to be part of this consult consultative body. From 2022, the terms of the council members with a one calendar year. I must also add here that the work to be done does not just talk, does not fall on the shoulders of the council members to whom you will be introduced shortly. It is anticipated that subcommittees would be established and would include other members from the ranks of the private sector to deliberate over a specific matter. For example, accommodation, transportation, and so on. As I mentioned earlier, the government has had to make some difficult decisions, one of which is to continue the closure, one of which is the continued closure of our borders. This, despite the fact that some of our regional neighbors have begun to reopen. This really has to do with the ability to manage risk. Because any country that relaxes its, res its restrictions and begins to accept visitors en masse is opening itself to certain risks, including the spread of the virus among the local population, and most importantly, the pressure on its healthcare system. This is what has influenced this government's decision to be all too cautious. You would note that in the recent SRO, SRO, we have expanded the category of persons who can enter the country. And coupled with that, we have established government designated quarantine facilities, providing persons with an option to early release if they so desire. But this does not remove any mandatory fault in the quarantine period for persons, for persons 
who wish to stay in their own home on arrival. We have also laid the platform for the development of the remote worker program, where we will be promoting Montserrat as an ideal destination to visit, to visit for an extended period, and where a visitor will be able to work as if it's at their own home. You'll be hearing more about this from my colleague, Minister, the Honorable Minister of Comes and Works, in days to come. Partners, that's who we are. As we continue to build our capacity to develop a more sustainable and competitive model of tourism development for Ireland Montserrat, I extend my heartiest congratulations and thanks and appreciation to you, the members of the Tourism Stakeholder Advisory Council, the Office of the Premier, and by extension, the Tourism Division is here to help create a business environment for all tourism stakeholders. And we look forward to working more closely with you as the days go by. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. And um, before we get washed out of this room, uh, the next and final item on the agenda is the distribution of the confirmation letters to, to the various members. Sharice? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, they are in order. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Alphabetical order. Uh, Emmy Aston from Scuba Montserrat, representing Water Sports. Don't dive into the water. <laughs> Mr. Ron Barzi uh, from Catheron, representing Arts and Craft. Wow. Mr. Ganeshwar Benny from Summer Breeze Restaurant, representing the rest of food and beverage sector. Mrs. Rosalind Castle Seely. Uh, Montserrat Tour and Taxi Association, representing the tour and taxi sector. <laughs> Mr. Norman Castle, Namcas Enterprises, representing tour operations and tour guiding. Ms. Merle Galloway, Tropical Mansion Suites, representing accommodation. <clears throat> Ms. Narissa Golden from Golden Media, representing the media. Mrs. Angela Greenaway, uh, Educator in Tourism Studies, representing academia. <clears throat> Mrs. Florence Griffith-Joseph of R.W. Griffith Investments Limited, representing the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And Mr. Nigel Harris of Flymon Strat, representing air transportation. You know you can't fly in this weather. <laughs> Thank you. And that's it. I, I'll just name uh, the, the four members who were not able to make it this evening. Uh, James Scriber Daly, um, representing the hiking, outdoor adventure, and environment sectors. Mrs. Sarita Francis from the National Trust, representing uh, environment, history, and culture. Rainford Culture, Don Gibbons, representing entertainment. And Dwayne Hickson, repre uh, representing the real estate sector. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that, that is the team uh, going forward for the next year and, year and a month and a half. And uh, you know, I could say on behalf of the Tourism Division, you know, we really do look forward to working with you and um, you know, coming good for the island of Montserrat, uh, you know, a place that we all call home and we want to see develop sustainably and being able to compete with um, you know, people in the countries and the various niche markets in which we excel. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. We, we do have some refreshments available uh, at the back. Um, we will not be able to go outside right now in any event. So please partake, and thanks again for being here. Thank you.